Welcome to this week's episode of That's Not Proper. Please share, subscribe, like, and review That's Not Proper on whatever podcast platform you are listening on. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining me today on That's Not Proper. I'm a little bit worn out today. I just got back from doing a bunch of shopping for our upcoming holiday dinner, our holiday November dinner. We're going to be doing it earlier than everybody else does it this year. I prefer to do it on a weekend if possible. And in addition to that, I like to do it on a different day, but it's also my oldest grandson's birthday. Happy birthday, my love, JJ. He's going to be six years old. And uh, he usually requests a birthday cake from me. (laughs) I am so thankful that he thinks so highly of me because in reality, I truly suck at making decorative pretty cakes. I can make it taste fabulous. Decorating, I am not so good at. So major props to those people that are cake decorators because that is hard work and also gives me incredible amounts of like agita and um, panic because I'm also a perfectionist. (laughs) But these cakes are not perfect. For some reason, though, my wonderful grandson thinks they're fabulous. So so I'm making for him a Minecraft Enderman cake. We will see how this turns out. Uh, In my mind, there's an idea. And uh, we'll just happen to see what happens. But in addition to the entire Thanksgiving dinner and desserts and things like that, um, I'm also making an Enderman cake. Oh, and he is also requested to be the king that day. So I am attempting to fulfill his wishes of being not only the birthday boy on our holiday dinner, but also the king. So I have no idea where he came up with that, but I think it's absolutely hysterical. So I got him a crown. Um, Anyhow, I am really looking forward to this dinner because I just love having everybody come over and spending the time together. Um, I'd love to do this stuff a whole heck of a lot more often, just other than, you know, when everybody gets together at the same time of year. But I do like having those special days set aside where we know, okay, this time of year, at least we're going to get together and spend some fun time together. So I am looking forward to that. In the meantime, though, I'll do my little panic and worry and plan repeatedly in my head, uh, attempting to make sure I have everything down pat so that I can at least enjoy the day once it actually arrives. The topic that I had for this week's episode was an interesting topic for me to choose. And it was interesting because this is something that I struggle with still. And it's the idea or the situation of having to tell someone no. And it may not just be the actual words no, but it's like stopping someone from doing something that I'm not comfortable with. It's made me feel awkward, that I'm nervous about. Or maybe it's something that I truly hate and don't want to be a part of. But what I had shared earlier this week was a graphic, and the graphic had said, I want to say no, but, and then I had listed a couple different things. And the things that I had listed listed, um, were, one, I I might lose my job. Or, you know, if I'm quiet right now, it's easier. And meaning that meant, you know, it, it'll end, this will stop. And, you know, there won't be any scenes made. Or another one was, well, they'll call me names or, well, but I get nervous. Or, you know what, I just gave in because it was awkward. And the reason why I chose that this week was, a co- well, actually a couple reasons. I have had some situations myself personally, well, actually many times over the years where I've been put in a situation where I know that I need to shut it down or I need to say no, but I don't know how to do it without causing a scene. In addition to that, I've had, my daughters have had some issues, especially at work. They've shared with me some issues that their coworkers have had as well. And it's, And it's, I thought about, and I thought, you know what, this is a big deal for some women. I know that there are some women out there that have absolutely no problem, no matter the situation, saying, no, 
cut it out, shut it down, get away from me and moving on and not giving a rat's ass what the possible uh, situation from that point on could be. I tend to be a little bit of, I don't know know if you call it a people pleaser, but I like it when everybody's happy. And so I tend to go way out of my way sometimes, even if it's just like in my mind, to make sure everyone's happy. I want everyone to be happy. So whether that means not causing a scene or not causing a ruckus or even um, bringing levity to a situation in the hopes that whatever awkwardness or uncomfortableness goes away, you know, I will do those things. And it has not been something that's always the best option. But the problem is, is because of these issues where I want to say no, but I feel awkward or I'm afraid I'm going to offend somebody or, you know, somebody is going to be mad at me or, hey, I might lose my job if I say something or do something in this situation. I don't always know how to go about handling it. And I have found it's an actually really common thing, especially for women. Now, I'm certain that there are men that have dealt with this same type of thing, but for this podcast, my focus is going to primarily be women, mostly because the people that I've spoken to have been women. And then obviously, because I am a woman myself, that's the situation that I have been in. And so I can speak to that with, you know, knowledge and experience. Now, normally I like to be able to have answers for everybody. And this is one of those podcasts where I don't have a lot of answers. And so I am sharing this podcast in the hopes that maybe someone has some answers for me. (laughs) But I also want women to know that they're not alone. It's not uncommon. Because that's how I feel sometimes as though I am alone in this situation. I know that I have heard from a lot of women, what do you mean you didn't just tell them no? Or, you know, oh, you shut that shit down, shut it down. No, it doesn't work that way all the time. And especially recently, I had been um, some, I had been given a few stories um, with situations that people had dealing uh, with people at work and they worked in situations where they had customers. And, you know, if you've ever worked in an environment where you have customers or you're in retail and there's customers, that idea, the old adage of the customer's always right. Well, in addition to that, when you have a situation where you have an upset customer, what tends to typically happen is management will side with the customer and not necessarily the employee. And if you have a situation where you have a customer who is coming on to you in an aggressive way, which I have news, this happens and this happens a lot. And when you, so when you have a customer who's coming on to you while you're at work, while you're in the middle of working in an aggressive way, and obviously without a care, because this stuff is done blatantly in a situation where we're not talking about a tiny little office where maybe somebody doesn't hear. I'm talking about in a situation where there are hundreds of people around. Um, And they're coming on and they're asking for your phone number and they're asking for your work schedule and they're asking when you get off and they're asking how long you've been here. And it's obvious where they're headed. Um, And then in addition to that, I heard several stories of customers actually touching employees that they're coming on to, putting their hand on their waist, putting their hand on their shoulder, getting very close in an intimate way that is not, you know, something that you would do with just some schmo off the street. And... Uh, Every one of these women said they really really weren't sure how to handle it because they knew if they had said something like, what are you doing? Step away. This is none of your business. That there was a chance based on the way that they were able to perceive this person that this could turn into a big situation, that the likelihood of their their boss or the management at their place of employment backing them up was slim to none. And in fact, I actually had someone tell me that the customer was actually given a coupon card because uh, this woman had actually said something, but the customer was given a coupon discount card because the management there sided with the customer instead of their own employee. 
I like to think that over the years I've gotten a little bit better about um, shutting things down or telling people no. And I don't mean just necessarily in situations where someone's, you know, hit on me or something like that. I'm, I'm talking about really everything. The type of person I am really struggles with saying no. And it a lot of it has to do with this conditioning that I've had over the years. And I'm not saying this is necessarily from my parents or anything like that, but I think it's a generational thing in some aspects. But it's it's like saying no is going to cause an issue. It's going to upset someone. It's going to come back onto me and I'm going to have to deal with it. So it's really just easier to accept the situation, try and wiggle my way quietly out of it. And then um, it'll just disappear and go away. And in reality, it doesn't because man, I am hard on myself later on. I, you know, it's, I'm not real quick witted all the time too. So it's like, oh, I should have said this, or I should have done that. Or, you know, I, I really wish I didn't care if someone was mad at me and, oh, it doesn't really matter if I lose my job. At least I stood up for myself. But the thing is, is for a lot of women, those are really big issues and things that we truly struggle with. No woman wants to be told that they're a a fucking bitch because they didn't uh, do what somebody else wanted them to do. And so sometimes it's easier to figure out a way how to slide out of that without actually saying no, but maybe not really doing it. And it's a really big struggle. And so when I was thinking about this podcast this week, I was thinking, well, what are the answers for these situations? Well, I don't think that the answers are necessarily the same for everyone. Like I had said, I know that there are women out there that have absolutely no problem, you know, being being very blunt and if necessary, uh, saying it in an aggressive tone so that it's real, real clear but that's not the same case for all women. And so what I thought was interesting is as we tell women and little girls and things like that, hey, you need to stand up for yourself and you need to say this and you need to do this and you need to make sure people are, your your, uh, intentions are really clear and that if you don't want someone touching you, that they don't touch you. Yes, those are all really good things. Those are great things. And in fact, man, I encourage you to start instilling those type of things in your children when they're really young. But there are a lot of us around here who didn't have that instilled necessarily in us when we were really young, or it's just not part of our character. And so what my question was, as I was going through all of this and trying to understand why do I do this and um, feeling, you know, empathy for these women that I speak to that struggle with the same thing. My thought was, why have we made it okay for someone to, to question our no? Why is that okay? Why aren't we telling people instead of telling girls and young and women, hey, you need to stand up for yourself. Why aren't we on the flip side saying, hey, when someone says no, that's okay. When someone says no, quit asking. When someone says no, they do not need to give you an explanation as to why they've said no, which is another thing I do. I feel like if I tell someone no, I have to give some like long, drawn out explanation that I planned way far in advance. Why can't I just say no? And why can't I just say it like this? No, no, thank you. And everyone be like, okay, she said no, and just move on with their day. But that's not how things work. So what I am curious about is why is it that we aren't telling people that? Why are we telling everybody how they've got to build themselves up to protect themselves from people that that harass them instead of saying, hey, how about we tell the harassers? How about we teach them that when someone says no, that means no, And you don't have to have your masculinity checked at the door. You don't have to be hurt and offended. It just means no. So move on with your freaking day. I also think it's really important that we recognize that we are all different individuals and we handle and address situations differently. So what you may do in a situation like this 
is not necessarily what another woman would do. So when you put that expectation on to somebody else, it's not it's not really fair. But what we can do, I think, in situations like this is support other women. If you're in a situation where you see this being done to a woman, and I'm saying this to men too, if you see this being done to a woman, and it's obvious because I have news, a woman who is uncomfortable and awkward and doesn't know what to do in this situation, it is clear in her body language. It is clear in her face. It obviously, the person that is harassing her at this point has absolutely no idea or just doesn't give a shit. But support that woman. Come to her aid. And it doesn't mean you need to make a scene either. It's something as simple as, hey, is there something I can help you with, sir? You know, it... it, it the, they need to know that they have someone that is supporting them, that is standing beside them, that is standing behind them, wherever it is that you're at, and that they have someone that they can rely on because they know they're not alone in this situation. I know for some people, this sounds like a really small thing, but for some of us, it's not. And it's it causes a lot of anxiety. It causes a lot of depression. It causes a lot of relationship issues. I know that I've had issues in my relationship because I I suck at this and I don't stand up necessarily and say no or shut it down or walk away or whatever all the time. And so there's been question as to maybe even where my loyalty lies. And I know in my heart and my soul where my loyalty lies. But sometimes because of this issue within myself that I haven't figured out how to deal with yet, it comes across as though my loyalty has switched and that kills me because it's not accurate. One of the biggest ways I feel like I have been able to work on this is baby steps. Saying no in little things. You know, someone asks me to do something, someone asks me to go somewhere, someone wants me to change the way that I do something. I find it that when I say no in those types of situations, it's almost like empowerment. And so when you start saying no in the little tiny things, where you've wanted to say no, maybe haven't said no in the past, it gives you this sense of confidence and it empowers you to say, take another little bit, a little, another little step, another little step into saying no into the bigger things and figuring it out. And I think it's really important that we check within ourselves and find out why, what is it that causes me to do this? Why do I feel this way? And is it actually accurate? Is everyone really going to call me names? Is everyone going to call me a bitch? Is, you know, am I going to be looked upon as this horrible human being? And if so, is it really that big a deal? In addition to that, when you're talking about workplace environment issues, I think it's really important that you come together with your management and say, hey, look, this is an issue. If you're telling me that I have to, as a employee, treat my customer this way when they, I'm being treated, treated in a harassing and often sexually harassing manner, then we need to redefine uh, how this place of employment works. And I need to talk to HR or something like that. But I think it's really important that we take those tiny, you know, little baby steps. Someone says, hey, I want you to come over to my house and do this for me. No, don't even give them a reason. <laughs> I suck at that and I'm trying really hard, but don't even give them a reason. It's those little tiny baby steps. I promise you, it does give you this sense of confidence and empowerment to take it to the next level and to the next level and to the next level. And in the meantime, talk to people that you are actually close with and just say, hey, look, I struggle with this and I would love if you could, you know, support me in this area or maybe give me some tips and tricks that you do, you know, but but understand that I'm not the same as you, but I want to get better in this area. But knowing that you have support is so vital for this kind of stuff because it is a huge struggle for some women. It's such a frustrating struggle to have too, because I, there are certain situations where I just don't have this issue. Like when it comes to, you know, someone uh, encroaching in my children's space or, um, you know, my partner, things like that. I don't have a problem <laughs> saying no for them, but for myself, I struggle with saying no with regards to a lot of things or shutting situations down abruptly. You know, I, I really struggle with that. And so, 
uh, what I'm saying is to other women, I would love to hear from you and I would love to hear what your struggles are with regards to this and how you've addressed this, addressed this. And if you are also seeking ways to get through it, and if maybe you've tried out this baby step method that I think works for myself, I'd love to hear from you. I'd also just really encourage women to come together and support one another and empower one another in this because I truly believe this is a lot bigger issue and it tends to perpetuate and it becomes an issue in other areas of our lives that we struggle with. And I think it would be really helpful if women know that they have support from other women or men in their lives so that they can have someone that they can work through this together with. I'm currently in the planning stages of a podcast coming up that I want to do live and in person with a few women. We're going to come together, have a few drinks, have a little bit of food, and we're going to be talking about sex. And I would love to get some feedback from other people prior to doing this podcast. So I would love it if you would email me at that's not proper Corey at gmail.com. This podcast, we're going to be discussing kind of like some myths and barriers in discussing sex and sexuality, especially with our partners. And I think it's a really important topic because it's something that I've struggled with. I know a lot of women have struggled with. I know that I believed for many years that sex was just for men. In addition to that, talking about sex was so awkward. And I mean talking about specifics about sex, likes and dislikes and things like that. And I think that those barriers need to be broken down and that we should be able to come together, especially with our partners, and discuss sex openly and compassionately and lovingly. But I think that starts with women realizing that it is okay to come together and discuss these topics so that we can start to break down these barriers and that our relationships can become more enjoyable, more pleasurable, and more uh, communication in them. So please email me at that's not proper Corey at gmail.com. Tell me some struggles that maybe you've had or things that you've done to overcome those struggles and barriers and defeat those myths that we were raised to believe. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of That's Not Proper. Stay tuned for next week's episode. In the meantime, email me at that's not proper Corey at gmail.com and share this podcast with everybody you know. <laughs>